enemy lies and he says all kinds of things. Nobody cares. Nobody loves. Uh, your God's not going to be there. <laughs> That's not what it says according to the scriptures. He says, I'll go with you even to the very end of the world. Uh, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Uh, Emmanuel being interpreted, a God with us. Uh, a God is with us tonight. Uh, hallelujah. We can worship our God. He's always on time. He has never failed us. We praise your wonderful name tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for walking with us. Hallelujah. There is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. A God that can heal. A God that can love. A God that can forgive. He's here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your wonderful name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thankful for his goodness. Thankful for his presence. You know, we go through things and we don't have to go through it by ourselves. That's the awesome thing about serving our God. We're not in it by ourselves. We don't go through it alone. And, and sometimes people may not even understand what you're going through. But our God does. He understands everything about us. And we can go on and on about that forever, but at this time, we're going to wait upon you for the Sunday evening tithe and offering. If we could have Brother Tom to come and assist us, Reverend Rueda to come and assist us. We know all Christians do pay tithes and gladly give an offerings as unto the Lord. We do it as he commands us according to his word. And when we do it, we are blessed. We are blessed. Three different ways to give. Of course, we have the QR code online, and then we have the uh, cash app, dollar sign, NTCC, Pasadena TX, and then we have this uh, old-fashioned way here where you put the money in the bag. You know, you don't have to be like some of those people, they, they call them a phantom offering. You know, they act like they're putting something in there. And it's not, I mean, if you don't have it, you don't have it. But you don't have to lie to kick it either. <laughs> I just don't have it. But when you give, the good Lord will absolutely bless you. Brother Tom, can you please pray? Praise the Lord. Thank you for your giving tonight. May the Lord richly bless you according to your giving. At this time, Pastor Dave is coming. God bless you, sir. Amen. Praise God. So early Wednesday afternoon, Reverend Ponzalan kicked me some songs. He normally does. He normally kicks the songs, and then I kick them to pastor and verify and whatever, so we know what to sing for that night. And he kicked it to me, and it said, fires. I was like, oh, okay. Yes. There you go. Yeah, and then that's when, that afternoon, that's when the fire happened. It was ironic. Just a little bit ironic. Don't you think? <laughs> it's funny. But anyways. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm taking my Bible reading tonight. Out of Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28, starting there in the 19th verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Take the last port, part of that 20th verse. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. If we can get Reverend Redding to please pray over the offering, sir. Or pray over the message. So no one told you that life was going to be this way. It's like you're always stuck in second gear. When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. You're still in bed at 10 and your work began at 8. You've burned your breakfast. So far, things are going great. Your mother warned you there'd be days like these. But she told you that when the world has brought you down to your knees, that I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you because you're there for me too. So we'll preach on title and message tonight, Jesus is there for you. Jesus is there for you. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. It doesn't matter how hard it may seem. It, may, it doesn't matter if you feel like your life is stuck in second gear. For, that, that's for us older people that actually drove the stick shifts. Second gear, yes, you could take off in second gear, but it, it took some oomph. It took some it just didn't go as smoothly as starting off in first. There was a reason why we did that. It's a reason why it's first, second, because you're supposed to follow the order. But what? It even doesn't matter about that. It doesn't matter everything else that's going on. Jesus is there with us. He says, lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. I will always be there with you, no matter what's going on in your life. Jesus is there. No matter where you are in your life, Jesus is there. No matter where the path of life may take you, Jesus is there. And he's waiting for you and he's walking with you and he's there beside you and he's carrying you and he's walking behind you. He's got your back. Jesus is with you. The psalmist wrapped it up this way in Psalm 139 and 7. He said, Whither Shall I go from thy spirit? <laughs> where, where can I go that you're not there, God? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Jesus is right there with you. When it seems like everything else is falling apart, when it seems like the waves of life are crashing over you, slamming into the side of your boat, when it seems like everything's topsy-turvy and, oh no, everything's going to fall apart, but Jesus is right there with you. We was there with the disciples. Jesus was right there with them in the midst of the storm, sleeping in the back of the boat. They weren't happy about it, but they forgot Jesus is right there with them. Brothers and sisters, there's times when we forget that Jesus is right there with us. But we cannot forget Jesus is there for you. In the midst of it all, even if it seems like Jesus is sleeping, you know what? Don't worry about it. Like I said this morning, go curl up with them. Fall asleep. Say, okay, God, I know we're going to still make it to the other side of what's going on because I'm with you, Lord, and I know that nothing's going to happen to me that's bad because you you said all things work together. God, I am with you. You are with me. Let's go.
doesn't matter how hard it seems. It says, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. He's right there with us. Well, it seems like I'm on top of the mountain. Yes, and Jesus is right there with you. Oh, man, you don't know, sir. It feels like I'm in the bottom of the valley. It's horrible. It's all uphill from here. And there's Jesus right there beside you, right there with you. Why? Because he says he'll be with us always. Jesus is there with us. There was a time in Afghanistan. We had to go on a foot march into the local city, and it took us through this slight incline. I say slight. It was about like this. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good little incline. And you know what? It seemed hard. It seemed difficult. But you know what the beauty of it was? If you looked around, you saw 20 other people right there with you going, come on, let's go. We've got a mission. We're here with you. Come on. And then you look around, and you see that one that's struggling, struggling. There's always one that's struggling. It's like, come on, you can do it. You can make it. And they start picking it up and going. And then the next person's struggling. And the next. But you know what? When we're all together, we can encourage one another. And we all made it on top of that and made it over it and made it where we need to go. Why? Because we encouraged one another. We were there with one another. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is with us. But we've got to be there one with another as well. And bring Jesus with us as well. And we can encourage one another. It doesn't matter we've got this we're in this together it's gonna be okay well but I've got a situation that even God won't be there for I doubt it matter of fact I know that's wrong what even there in the lion's den those people had set up a trap thinking they had woohoo King, here's what we're going to do. Let's set a trap for Daniel because we know he prays to God. Let's set a trap. We're going to get him this time. But, oh, when they went and reported it to the king, the king responded. Sadly, knowing, uh uh-oh, I've got to follow through with my decree, but he responded in Daniel 6 and verse 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel And cast him into the den of lions. But here's what I love. Here's the part I love. You know, sometimes you're reading the Bible and something jumps out out at you like it hasn't before. And you're like, wait a second. Has this been here the whole time or did somebody add this recently? (laughs) No, it's been there. It's just because it's the living word of God. It speaks to you when it needs to speak to you. It reaches out when it needs to reach out. But anyways, right here it says, Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, The king said it to Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. The king's throwing him into the lion's den, into this horrible situation where most people would be readily devoured but the king as he's putting them in said I've seen that you walk with God and God walks with you I've seen it time and again in your life Daniel so you know what the God who you serve continually continually he didn't take breaks he didn't oh it's too hard today I'm not going to serve him today but I'll pick it back up tomorrow continually he will deliver thee the king knew it was going to happen even before he threw Daniel in there And sure enough, Daniel goes there in the lion's den in a situation that really should have been the death of him. And oh, the next morning, the king comes running out there and goes, Daniel! Yes, O king! (laughs) I'm still here. My God delivered me. My God sent somebody. My God was right here with me. Even there in the lion's den. Where it seems like you've been thrown to the lions. Oh, you'll get them this time. 
Oh, we've trapped them this time. Oh, no, you haven't because Jesus is there with us. Jesus is there with you. Jesus is there. He's not going to let you walk into a trap and not bring you through it. Yes, Satan throws a trap out there, and he tries. He tries. But, oh, you keep Jesus close, and you keep your eyes on Jesus, and you keep walking with Jesus. You've got this. Jesus is there with you. Even in the lion's den. Jesus is there with us in the fires of life. When things are heated. When things get almost unbearable. Because yes, fire can be warm and toasty. (laughs) In a nice little fireplace and you keep a distance. But if you're in it very much, or it gets too big, it gets hot. This situation, three men were thrown into this fire that not only was hot, it was seven times hotter than it had ever been. Oh, we got them this time. But oh, they knew something. They knew something as they were going into the fire. They knew I'm standing with Jesus, and Jesus said he would be standing with me. Jesus is going to be right here with me. Jesus is there for me. So, King, we do not even take a moment to hesitate. We are not careful to answer thee, O King. Surely the God we serve, the God we serve will deliver us out of thine hand. And sure enough, There they are in the fire, in this hot, 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 hot fire. There they are. And the king looks in there and goes, wait a minute. The math ain't mathing. We threw in three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wait a second. I probably just forgot. We had to have thrown in four. Hey, wise men. Hey, people. How many did we throw in there? We threw three in there. Why am I seeing four? (laughs) And not only do I see four, and they have no hurt upon them, but the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. He's someone that I haven't seen before. Jesus is right there in the fire with them, taking care of them. Brothers and sisters, as we're there thrown in that fire, in that hot situation, in those tough times when we think, that life may be over, that things are over. Oh, but we look and there's Jesus right there with us and we can walk out just like them without even the smell of fire upon them, without even the, any harm done whatsoever. They were walking around. Why? Because Jesus is there for you. Even there in that fiery furnace, walking through the fires of life, Jesus is there with you, right there. And in the darkest days, in the darkest of days, darkest of nights, when it seems like all hope is lost, we can remember what the psalmist said. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's dark here. It's horrible here. It's pressing here. If you've ever been in a really, really, really dark spot where no light's coming through at all, it almost feels like the darkness is even closing in on you. (laughs) It's, it's, It's horrible. But what? He says, I will fear no evil. I don't have to fear anything, even in the darkest of valleys. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I may not be able to see you because it's so dark, Lord, but I know you're here. I have faith that you're here. I can't see you right now, but that's okay. I know for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You are taking care of me in the midst of it all, Lord. It doesn't matter how dark the day is, how dark the night is, how 
dark the valley is, God, I know you're here with me. I don't fear the evil. I don't feel or fear what's going on. I don't have to worry about all of that. I don't have to let the darkness cloud my mind because I know that, God, you are here with me, and we're going to make it out of here. You're going to help me through this because, Lord, you are right here with me. Why? Because he promised, I'll be there for you. Always. As it said at the beginning, I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour. I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you. Jesus is going to be there for you. Through all of it, time and time and time and time and time again, Jesus shows up right there with you. Time and time and time and time again, you see, there's Jesus right there with you, right there taking care of it with you, right there bringing you through time and time again. So what? So we've got to bring that same hope to those around us. We've got to bring that same hope to those around us. There in Matthew 20, 28, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teach them. Show them. He says, And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. What? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So teach them that I'm with you always. Well, you left off everything else. No, teach them that God's with me, God's with you, God's in this together. He will be with us always, even unto the end of the world. We've got to bring them hope. We've got to bring them that hope and that love. We've got to bring them that light of the life of Jesus Christ. We've got to bring it to them. Because so many people are trapped there in the valley of the shadow of death. So many people are trapped there underneath all the burdens of life, all the cares of life, all the affairs of life. They're trapped under all of that. Satan's got them all wrapped up, spun around so they don't see Jesus over there saying, hey, I'm right here. Lo, I'm with you always. Hey, I'm willing to be here for you. Hey, I died for you. Hey, I love you. Hey, I care about you. They don't see it because Satan's got them so wrapped up in everything else. And it really is a spiral. Things just, as things start looking bad, if, if you look at things that are bad in your life, you'll see more things that are bad in your life. But if you look at things that are good in your life, you'll start seeing more things that are good in your life. When you wake up in the morning and you're thankful for things that you've got and you're thankful and you're you approach the day with a mind of thankfulness, you realize how much more you have to be thankful for, how much more you have to be thankful for, how much more that God has done for you. You notice it step by step by step. Why? Because you're paying attention to it. So we've got to bring them Jesus. It's a story of a barber. This minister went in to get his hair cut by the barber. The barber was his normal barber, one he went to all the time. But this time, the barber just couldn't hold it back any longer. As he's cutting the minister's hair, he tells the minister, I don't even see how you can believe in God or that God is with you. I don't see it. Have you not seen how dark the world is? How horrible the world is? Have you not seen all the bad going on around us? Have you not seen all of that? How can all of that be happening and you still say that God's here? And you want to spread the hope of God? I don't get it. The minister was wise. 
took a moment, didn't say much of anything at that moment, paid his bill, gave his tip, started walking out the door. And as he walked out the door, he happened to see this homeless man with a heavy, thick beard and scraggly, just messed up, matted hair. He grabbed the man, brought him, and said, come here, come here real quick. He walked inside and told the barber, how can barbers exist if this man with a scraggly beard and messed up hair and all of this, he looks so horrible. How can there even be barbers in this world? Well, did anyone tell him that I'm here to cut hair? Did, 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 did he ever come to see me? The minister said, exactly. Did you ever tell, have you ever heard that about God? Have you ever told somebody else about God? Have they even went and came and tried to find God for themselves? Have you done something to help spread the good in this life? To help spread Jesus? Brothers and sisters, Jesus is there with you, but it's our responsibility to bring him to others and say, look, there is a Jesus. There is hope. There is love. There's something for you. But you've got to come and see him for yourself so that Jesus can be there for you. Jesus is there for you to pull you out of that pit, that miry pit. Jesus is there for you to walk alongside of you. Jesus is there for you. In Proverbs it says, And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Jesus Christ is there with you. And he wants to stick closer than a brother. <laughs> My sons, they fight, of course, but they love the snot out of each other. Even when they're mad at each other, they can't be apart from each other for very long. All of a sudden, they're popping in the other person's room or Come play with me. What's going on? Where's he at? You know, Josiah spends the night. Jeremiah, as soon as he sees him, Josiah! He gives him a huge, and they like run towards each other. If it's been five minutes, they run towards each other. But brothers and sisters, Jesus sticks closer than a brother. He's right there with us. He will never leave us. He, he's right there with us to say, come on, I'm right here with you. Hey, hey, hi, good to see you, my child. Hi, hi, hi. He's right there. He loves you that much. He's closer than a brother. Closer than a family member. He's right there with us always. No matter what. I'm going to close with this. The prayer of St. Patrick. Quite a godly man. Truly. Quite a godly man in a lot of ways. But this was his prayer. Christ with me. Christ before me. Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eye of all that see me, Christ in the ear that all that hear me. I arise today through the mighty strength of the Lord of creation, Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is there for you. In you, around you, before you, behind you, beside you, with you, with your children and your children and their children. God is there with you. Why? Because he says, I will be there for you. He said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. It is so. It is settled. Amen. 
Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Yes. Jesus is there for you. With every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to God. As we enter into this time now, where we're getting ready to pray, we're getting ready to spend time with Jesus, he's here for you tonight. He's here for you tonight. He's waiting with outstretched arms. He's waiting to be with you. He's waiting for you. No matter what's going on in your life, Jesus is there for you. He's here for you tonight. And if you've never met him before, tonight, tonight is the time. Tonight is the time to surrender and give it all over to God. Surrender your life to him. Tonight is the night to be there with Jesus so that he can be there for you, with you, always. As you turn it over to him. If you're carrying a heavy burden tonight, give it to him. If you just need to spend some time with him, come spend time with him. Jesus is there for you. Father, we thank you tonight for this message that you've given us. We thank you, God, that we can apply this to our life. We thank you that you are with us always. You're with us through everything that goes on in our life. We can look to you and know that you're right there with us, God. Father, as we turn the remainder of this service over to you, I pray, God, that you would just move in a mighty way. You would draw people with your love, God, as they come to spend time with you, as they come to talk to you, as they come to pour out their hearts to you, God. I just thank you and I praise you for answering and hearing every prayer. In Jesus' name. These altars are open.